Revelation chapter 18, and we will read verse 4. So as we know, this passage is talking about Babylon being burned up, and they try to separate this Babylon of Revelation chapter 18 from the Babylon of Revelation chapter 17. Remember, the, the basis of their reason is because the Babylon of Revelation chapter 17 is supposed to be a spiritual Babylon, and then the Babylon in Revelation chapter 18 is supposed to be a secular, economic type of Babylon. But then we saw from multiple scripture passages that Revelation 18, it is talking about a spiritual Babylon as well because of the golden cup, because of the souls of men, the souls of men as well. So because of that, that's the reason why that those two Babylons in Revelation 17 and 18 are talking about the one and the same Babylon. So as we might recall, Babylon is being burned up. Now what time period is this in? That's the question. What time period is this in? That's why some people, they might put the burning up of Babylon in the middle or an earlier time period in the tribulation. Now I kind of mentioned this before, but I'll teach it more plainly now. This one is toward the end of the tribulation. This is toward the end of the tribulation. The reason why is because of when we look at Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4, which we left off. Uh, I'm not going to really explain verse 4 because I, I did it last time. But notice that God is telling the people to come out of Babylon because she is being burned up. She is falling. When you return to Revelation chapter 16, when you go back to Revelation 16, remember Revelation 16 is the vials, right? The vials are being poured out as judgment from the Lord. The vials, what time period are they? They're in the latter part of the tribulation, remember? Mm -hmm. The seven vials. Now notice in one of the very last vials that is being poured out, that's when the fall of Babylon occurs in the last vial. You'll notice that over there. So let's look at Revelation chapter 16, and we'll read verse 19. See that? Did you read that? 19? And then 20 in the remaining verses? That seems like we're getting over there. If you look at a couple verses behind it, if you look at verses 12 through 15, before, before the fall of Babylon, before the fall of Babylon, people are preparing for Armageddon. See that? So Armageddon, which is the end of the tribulation, they're preparing for that. And then what happens after that? Look at the seventh vial, the verse that we read before about Babylon. It's falling. So that's why... The burning of Babylon is going to have to be pushed sometime toward the latter part of the tribulation. That would make a lot more sense. Okay, so let's keep reading about the horror of Revelation. We'll read verse chapter 18 and verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven. So remember the... Roman system has been carrying on from the B.C.s to early 80s uh, through Christ's timeline and even through the 2,000 years of church history and even current events today. Her sins, the Lord remember everything that they've done in persecuting the martyrs, in gaining wealth, in damning the souls of men. And you even see that today with your loved ones and families, which grieves you, right? Yeah. So because of that, the Lord recalls the sin. It reaches all the way up to heaven. So what does God say concerning about that? He mentions at the latter part of verse 5, And God hath remembered her iniquities. The Lord remembers. He keeps track. Now remember, on a spiritual plane, on a spiritual plane, God is not, God is looking at this Babylonian system. He doesn't say Catholic. He doesn't clearly say Roman. You know why? Because this Babylon entity 
was carrying through the shifts and the changes. It was pagan Rome, and then it went to Roman Catholicism, and in the modern century, they claim that they changed, the Vatican Council, they changed from the Inquisition timeline. So see over here is that this entity keeps changing. So that's why the Lord's not going to give a one simplistic statement. If he says Catholic Church, that's not going to apply to pagan Rome. That's good. So he's going to, so he calls it Babylon. Why? Spiritually speaking, he sees yeah. that. Now, when we're talking about physically in our physical worldly level, we know what it is. It is the Roman system. Amen. It is the Roman system. But spiritually speaking, God sees it as Babylon. Now, remember this, because God will see it as Babylon, this spiritual entity of Babylon, because it's spiritual, guess what? It's not bound into one nation. Because it's spiritual, it's going, its spirit is going to affect and give birth to different areas. That's why I mentioned to you before, the, seven, the city of the seven hills does not just apply to Rome, right? Babylon is the mother, but she will have many daughters. That's the reason why a lot of people online, they get messed up. They see verses talking about similarly with Revelation 17 and 18. You can find the wording of Revelation 17 and 18, the same thing applied to Jerusalem, actually. When God talks about Israel messing up in Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Jeremiah. But the simple answer to that is Israel, the reason why they're called that is because they endorsed, they accepted the Babylonian worship system. Yeah. They didn't come up with the religion themselves. That religion came from Babylon. Yeah. It all the way came back from Nimrod and Semiramis. And I already explained to you about that. That's where the Roman Catholic system came from. Good it's example. Nimrod and Semiramis. But that system, Babylon, it's been passing down throughout the years and then it's been settling at Rome as the mother. All the other cities and nationality groups of people, they're adopting it as daughters. And a lot of people think that that's the United States of America, which is way off. That's not really true at all. But there is no doubt you can see a lot of similarities in Revelation 17 and 18 concerning about the richness and a lot of mace Masonic symbolism, etc., etc. Uh, a lot of the spiritual abominations of Babylon, woman, cop, etc., they tried to assimilate that with Statue of Liberty, etc., etc. Uh, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free, you know, that kind of, that kind of, uh, bleh, my, I just went blank there, but that quotation. <laughs> That quotation, which a lot of people use for American patriotism, they try to assimilate that with the waters of Revelation 17. So a lot of people see, they try to match, a, they find a lot of match up in Revelation 17 and 18 with USA, and then with Israel, and then we can see a lot of other parts in Europe as well. But the simple answer is this, the simple answer is they're all just borrowing, it all comes from one source anyway. That proves that they're children, not the mother. They're yeah. not the original mother. That's good. They're all babies. They're all daughters. The original mother is right here. Roman Catholic Church system. Why do we choose that? Because it, there's too many evidences, Revelation 17 and 18, that fits with this one, the Catholic Church system, more than Israel, more than uh, the United States or other parts of Europe. That must be understood. Okay. So God remembered the iniquity. See, it's spread throughout all the world. That's why God's finally burning it. Because it's been going on ever since the B.C.s of Nimrod all the way to today. So God remembered it. So all your loved ones who are dying and going to hell because of this wicked system, just know this. The Lord remembered it more than you. Amen, brother. So judgment will come on this wicked system. Amen. Thank you. We don't want Roman Catholics to burn no, in hell. No, no. But we want this wicked system that's damning such souls Amen. to burn. It's such a wicked slavery system yeah. that has damaged your loved ones yeah. and the very yeah. souls of mankind. Yeah. So that's why verse 6, God says, Reward her even as she rewarded you. 
So the word reward does not necessarily mean a positive thing. Reward basically means what they give to you, what uh, you deserved, right? So because I deserve this, we look at it as a positive thing when they reward us. But it can be a negative thing too. Because you deserve this, we're rewarding you with a punishment. So she deserves her reward is as she rewarded us. Why? Because of the blood of the martyrs, remember? Mm -hmm. Revelation 17. God recalls this wicked system. So God's going to reward her. As she rewarded us. And what? Double unto her double according to her works. Even more than that. God will make sure it's doubled. Good. God will make sure that he will double the reward on this wicked system because this system has been going on for thousands, thousands of years. It has damned so many souls to hell. So God's going to make sure that she receives it double for all the works, all of the works that she did in her life. If there's a religious system that you want to count on the number of works for salvation, it is the Roman Catholic Church. I have their system, their dogma, it's this thick. I, I would think that's even, it's, I, sometimes I wonder, man, is, is this bigger than the Bible or what? Yeah. It makes you wonder. All of these works are bigger than the words of God should be very disturbing to you. Yeah, wow. In the cup which she hath filled, remember she's holding a golden cup spiritually, all that blood she filled up, right, in her cup, yeah. mm -hmm. filled to her what? Double. God's going to fill that up. Double the blood. Wow. He's going to double that blood on this wicked system. She will burn. Her time is coming. Her time is coming. So that's why it's important where you look at Galatians chapter 6. Look at Galatians chapter 6. I'm going to look at Galatians 6 and then Romans chapter 2, please. Galatians chapter 6, and then we're going to look at Romans chapter 2. Now there's another passage, but we won't turn there for time's sake, but it's the book of Hosea. And the passage in Hosea, it mentions that they that sow the wind shall reap the whirlwind, yeah. as many of you know. Yeah. Why, what does it mean by that? What it means by that is that because a lot of what they sowed is wicked and sinful, the Lord's going to make sure that they reap not just um, a wind, but the world wind. So it shows that whatever you sow in your life, whatever work you do in your life, like we read at Revelation 18, according to their works, remember this, you have to reap what you sowed. A lot of you have heard that phrase before. Yeah. You reap what you sow. But God warns that sowing and reaping can come in even worse. The reaping can be much worse than the sowing you got to understand. Mm. Yeah. So remember this, just because you committed a little sin does not mean that you're going to get a small little punishment after that or equal level. Sin, one thing I learned is sin is placed unfair with you. Yeah. Yeah. Sin is unfair with you. A lot of people blame God for this, but that's not God's fault. That's actually your sin's fault. Mm -hmm. Because sin, that's what it does. It plays unfair with you. It's wicked. It's not a good guy saying, oh, okay, I'll return this to you. No, sin is a traitor. It wants to eat you alive. you got to realize that. That's why we have to preach about sin. That's why we have to preach hard about sin. Amen. That's why we have to rebuke preachers who don't preach on sin. People say, why do you have to do that? Because that's how wicked sin is, that it has to be kicked. If you don't do that, that's why so many people are living wrecked lives. Why? Because they're reaping what they've sown. Yeah. They sinned because no one warned them about that. That's why they sinned, and then they reap not just the equal amount, but double. Yeah. No wonder there are so many Christians who sadly become atheists and leave church. You know why? No, Their churches aren't preaching about sin. That's why. Oh, and they think it's God's fault. God, wow. why did this bad thing happen in my family? That's the number one reason why a lot wow. of people become yeah. staunch atheists. Yeah. You know why? They didn't have a proper Christian upbringing. Wow. Because they blame God, not on sin, yeah. not on worldliness, not on the compromise of doctrines going on in their pastor's churches. Why do you think my public ne enemy number one, as I mentioned to you before, is actually not the cults, mm -hmm. it's not the unbelievers, it's actually non-denominational churches. You know why? Because look up the top 10 churches in the world, it's non-denominational ones. In America, it's non-denominational ones. 
and I bet you, uh, and I can, uh, I can give, take it for granted that they're saved people too. Mm -hmm. okay. So think about that. That's why you have the weight on your shoulder for a ministry is precious. I want to give one warning to Bible believing pastors. Don't you dare learn garbage from Rick Warren's book. Amen. Or all these other mega pastors. Amen. Just like a lot of fundamentalists are trying to copycat. Yeah. That's a slavery system right there that's causing a lot of our younger people, next generations, to fall away. You know why? You're not feeding them doctrine. That's right. You're not warning them about sin. That was a small little sermon. Sorry. Okay. Hey, Galatians hey, like chapter 6. But I hope that was eye-opening. You understand why I preach yeah. very hard against these kind of churches. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Some people online, you got to understand that. Isn't this person a saved believer on YouTube? Why would you be so fervently attacking him? It doesn't make sense. They're my public enemy number one. Amen. Because they have the capability. They're the ones that can turn the tide of the world. If you don't believe it, but what happened in California when, you know, they... It, uh, that it brought up to the Ninth Circuit Court. And you, you know, myself, I didn't have to get involved because you know why? I knew we got too many people. We got enough churches. And there were two million churchgoers involved in that. Yeah. So that's why I was like, just wait and see what will happen. Well, nice. Yeah, and you know what? I bet you a majority of them were non-denominational. Yeah. See, they have power. They have capability. They're not yeah. using it. Yeah. Yeah, you know why? They want to grow into a bigger church. Okay, I better shut up. Let's look at Galatians 6. Okay. Uh, Okay. All right, but please understand that. I want everyone to understand that, please. That's why I, I expound so much on the importance of right doctrine and preaching hard against yes. it. You have to understand that. Otherwise, later on in life, when something unfair happens in your life, it's going to yeah. be very easy to blame God yeah. and blame your home church when you've been warned so many times that we're imperfect people Amen. and that only God is perfect and sin is a problem and your flesh is a problem and the world's a problem. So why do you hug your flesh? Why do you hug your sin? Why do you hug the world who betrayed you and made you bitter against God? Oh, That's good. Yeah. Don't blame the Christians in the church or the, or the pastor, etc. All right, Galatians chapter 6. Let's go back. Verse 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Yeah. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Go to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Read verse, four, uh, read verse 4. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, and knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. You can see that this passage is not just applicable today, but it's prophetic as well toward the Revelation timeline. Yeah. Because these two passages are saying, be careful how you do your works in your life. Because you reap what you sow. You will reap corruption when you sow to your flesh. Things that please your flesh. And guess what? If God's grace, because we're under the age of grace, right? The church age. Yeah. This system is under that age of grace. And God has shown a lot, enough grace toward all, not just the Roman Catholic Church, but every God-forsaken individual around the world who has yeah. blasphemed the Lord. He has shed them enough grace, enough mercy, and because of that, guess what? He's doing that. He's showing them goodness so that they can repent. But if they don't repent, God's remembering all the goodness that he's given to them, and they abused it, and that's when he builds up his wrath even. So that's found in Romans 2, which you read. That's good. All right. Now let's go back to Revelation 18. Revelation chapter 18. Let's continue reading verse 7. So the Lord's going to fill it up double. So please, please, please don't gamble with sin or with your flesh. All right? He's actually... Burning Babylon yeah. double. <laughs> that's good, preacher. That's right. <laughs> so he's doing double. So that's why I don't mess with sin. Don't trust your flesh so much. Yeah. Why do you trust your flesh, believe in your flesh more than God? Amen. It's a dangerous Come thing. On. It's a dangerous thing. It'll betray you. It'll cause double the problem. 